I'm in the year eight common room. Bunking maths and chatting fraff. Room splattered with the pattern of back chat. Bodies covered in Reebok, Kappa and Naff Naff. We are the spotty face riffraff. Baffed by the complexities of our pulsating pores, we try to bolt the door on our hormones, but we can't keep this metamorphosis at bay, can't articulate our dismay at this change. So we cope with the throb of wet dreams and the perforation of first tampon by throwing ice pops at each other and breaking each other's Tamagotchis. Beneath this deluge of puberty, I stare at the boy I pretend not to fancy, despite the messy way he masticates his chips, cheese and beans. His curtains and tracksuit make me weak at the knees. He doesn't see me. See, I'm not part of the clan of underfed and well-bred girls that get invited into teenage beds to wrap soggy hands around newly formed glands. At age 13, my desirability is yet to be acquired, so he evades my gape. He does not reciprocate. In a few years' time, I seek revenge and reject him on Facebook, but right now I'm upset that I'm not one of his favourites. In the panoptic space of the year eight common room, the walls are covered in self-conscious slogans that tell us drugs are bad and vegetables are good. As if we can't figure this out for ourselves. But these walls are wiser than they seem. They have seen generations of teens cut their teeth. When the teachers don't look, the bricks pull us close to their lips and whisper, these walls will confine you for longer than you think. These years will define you. But we don't listen, because we're too busy flirting and bullying, learning these traits that will help us succeed in the workplace. Here, we scatter the seeds of teenage dreams that we will never reap. We will get distracted from these ambitions by curriculums that care more about grades on a page than what is actually in our brains. By teachers who will define what is realistic for us to aim for. Some will get set up to fail by a system that favours compliance over free thinking. And some will slip through the cracks and be swallowed by the earth till they erupt in a volcanic violence that will burn everything they touch. They are the lost boys taught to graduate to the status of waste men. The lost girls who are taught to cut out their tongues because sometimes their words are ugly. They are the children of parents who don't have sharp elbows. The only blades they have are made from the shards of the windows they smashed because they were ignored but they turned those knives inwards instead of severing the shackled mindset that ambition is a luxury they can't afford. They inhale that glass. It shreds the protest from their tongues. With harsh punishments we miseducate our young and they can't climb above the wreckage to free their lungs because that social ladder's broken at the bottom rungs. But there are those who will succeed and they will learn to shut up and listen how to copy from textbooks and be part of a system how to form an orderly queue outside a classroom that will extend through time into a never-ending line to board the tube at 8.25 a.m. every day but back to 13 Fumes of first fag fill the music room Her nose twitches as she enters And I wonder if Miss knows what I've been up to So I hide behind giggles fueled by Dr Pepper and salt and vinegar disco Scared I'll get caught My adolescence is wrought with these meaningless secrets Then the music teacher screeches A proper cup of coffee from a proper copper coffee pot in choir practice, we're made to repeat this over and over again till our individual voices blend into one shrill sound here. We will learn how to be part of a crowd. But what about those who can't sight read? Those that can't keep beat? Those off-key people will get pushed to the sidelines because they don't seem quite right. Those that stand out like sore thumbs will have to lower their voices till they're insignificant. They will hide behind dumbness and indifference. They will be pushed into a humdrum future where they can't be too loud because they boxed up their voices and lost the keys behind classroom doors. And I'm not blaming any teachers because their dreams were traded too. 
for instant coffee and rush lunch breaks in the staff room. The weight of red pens crippled the fingers that once pointed to stars and the passion of inspiring young minds was dampened by streamlining children into hierarchies, thereby marking out their destinies. I'm in the year eight common room. Sewing adolescent fantasies into the upholstery of state-issued chairs, but these hopes will be superseded by a pattern of hierarchy that will see classrooms transform into office blocks and teachers into bosses. At age 13, I'm too naive to see my future in the coffee room. Bunking work and shirking my duties. Rooms splattered with a pattern of chit-chat. Bodies covered in pinstripes, skirt suit and ties, we are the white collar riffraff. We flirt over spreadsheets in the hope that we'll get to dirty our bedsheets. We stuff our dreams underneath mattresses where no one can see, but like the princess, we're kept awake by the pinpricks of the pea. We keep these secrets buried deep as we walk the life that was mapped out for us at age 13.